have just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. How could ancient myths and symbols count as real evidence for cosmic events in the past? No one should be asked to believe a mythic story, but common patterns around the world must have an explanation. Of course, every myth involves human imagination and interpretation, which is why over time the word myth came to mean make-believe, not true. Our role is to identify the provocation in natural experience, which is an entirely different matter. That does not require us to believe any story in the form it's come down to us. To find the underlying events, we work with the cross-cultural, often global, convergence of human memories. In particular, the convergences on unique details that would not be possible in the absence of a shared experience. The dragons of human imagination did not exist as such. But why would we choose to ignore the extraordinary events that are required to explain the global similarities? So we sift through the stories and we find innumerable descriptions of a frightful chaos monster, most often described in serpentine or dragon-like form. We follow the theme back to its first recorded expressions, and to our surprise, we discover that these mythic creatures were originally cosmic. Only in later times were they localized geographically through regional storytelling. That gives us the beginnings of an explanation of a global theme, an archetype. As we expand our field of view, it becomes increasingly clear that extraordinary natural events, acting on human imagination perhaps 5,000 years ago, produced an explosion of storytelling. Of course, world mythology cannot be true in the interpretive terms that the myths are anciently transmitted to us. No fiery serpents in the sky, no terrestrial mountain reaching to the center of heaven, no living being in the sky appearing as a motionless sun. But such myths are global. The mother goddess Venus, the ancestral warrior Mars. Yes, these are myths, but Venus as goddess and Mars as warrior are global archetypes. That's where the challenge lies. Don't believe in accidents. Mars does not look masculine, Venus does not look feminine, but these planetary associations are worldwide and there has to be an explanation. The mythic themes did not arise from any natural experience today, but what about a provocation in an earlier time? No natural phenomenon we experience today could possibly have inspired the detailed tapestry of world mythology. That's why deliberate attention to recurrent themes is so essential, and that means penetrating to the experiential substructure of global storytelling. We must always ask, what concrete experience is required to produce the worldwide themes, themes recorded with different words and different symbols and different sacred practices, all pointing back to one phenomenal experience? You cannot get the coherence of archetypal mythology by making things up. Make-believe will not create a global story of a former central sun prior to the present sun, but the idea is worldwide. You have to follow this investigation to grasp the power of converging testimony, just as any good detective would do. All of the mythic archetypes are inseparably connected to each other. There is not a single global theme that stands in isolation from the other themes. Hundreds of cross-cultural themes are all part of the tapestry of world mythology. Of course, the surface of storytelling is cluttered with localized contradictions, but there is a discernible substructure that is entirely unified. It's this substructure of human memory that assures us of a globally shared experience. 
The single requirement is that we hear the ancient witnesses, hear them sufficiently to recognize the common patterns, the unified substructure of human memory. And that's what our study of the ancient cultures is about. One story told around the world, fully coherent, directing our attention to a profound human experience that continues to echo around us in a thousand different ways. Humanity can only be helped by bringing the human experience and the celestial provocation into the light of day.